Happy Wednesday morning to you, Cross Point. Trust that you are well. Trust that you are fighting for faith, fighting for joy, fighting for hope and overcoming by the power of his grace. And Christ will cause you to stand in the day of trouble. I'm filming in my backyard. Actually, my way, way backyard. It's actually in the woods here. Uh, funny thing, uh, when I was a little boy, first seven, eight years of my life, I walked a lot in the woods of Ohio. And still, it's kind of odd as I get old, I remember things like that. Uh, remember the woods when I was a, a kid. But anyway, I'm back here. I want to show you just a couple things before I get started. Look at that. I planted this tree about a week and a half ago. That is a shag bark hickory. Looks like he's going to make it. All this is new growth right here. So um, he is, that tree is planted right next to a cherry tree that is down. Check this out. Look at this. Not very impressive if you ask me. See that? That tree did not make it. You want to know why? Because he wasn't anchored in Christ. That's why. So he fell over when the winds blew and the storms came. That tree fell over. So that cherry tree did not have a deep tap root. Unlike the hickory tree, which I planted right there, and I planted one up front and planted some white oak trees, they have deep tap roots. And so when the storms come, they stand still. And I should say in this area, you'll see all kinds of little trees on the ground and over there and every one of these that i'm looking at that are down black locusts they do not grow well it's a hardy wood it's a hardwood rot resistant they use it for fence posts and such does not grow well right here and the root balls that i've seen when it does come through it's almost like it curls in under itself and it doesn't go down so word to the wise word to the trees if the trees are listening you know uh, grow deep and be a tree of integrity, you know, and uh, anyway, uh, but I'm back here in the woods. It just feels peaceful. Uh, you can hear the four-wheeler in the distance, neighbor kids having fun. So I want to read a scripture to you. Um, we might be coming out of COVID, or at least some of the mask restrictions look to be lifting. Uh, the CDC has said if you're fully vaccinated, and they define that as two weeks after your second shot for those vaccines that require two shots or two weeks after the only shot of Johnson and Johnson, then you are fully vaccinated. You actually don't have to wear a mask anymore, but you're still subject to local and state laws. So, uh, and Fauci, um, well, that's another story, but DeWine, is following along with the CDC and Governor DeWine, of course, Governor of Ohio. So it looks like things are beginning to thaw. And you know what I've been wondering? Probably what you've been wondering. It's like when the lid gets lifted, when things, when the restrictions fade, like, uh, is everything going to go back to normal? Probably not. Will our practices and habits go back to normal? Or have we learned some new habits? Have we learned some new ways of thinking and acting that are going to now take root? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I know a lot of church leaders are looking uh, around and don't really know kind of who's <laughs> with the church anymore because there's been so much shifting. But here's a scripture I want to share with you uh, for today. So it's from Hebrews chapter 10. The book of Hebrews is written to a group of Christians who were undergoing persecution, uh, they were falling away. They were in the midst of uh, apostasy, many of them. Not all of them, but it was, it was a temptation. And so the writer says this to them, Hebrews chapter 10, uh, we'll do uh, verse 24, 25. And let us be concerned about one another. That's beautiful, isn't it? Let us be concerned about one another in order to promote love and good works. So let us be concerned about one another to the end that we provoke love and good works in one another, not staying away from our meetings as some habitually do, but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day drawing near. When times are hard, God's people dig in and they look out for one another. That is such a biblical thought. It is the complete opposite of isolation and victimhood where you go on the offense and with 
being motivated by love, you reach out to others in order to provoke love and good works in them. And it, he actually mentioned not like staying away or fading away, which is usually how it goes down. There's like a slow drift, a drift away from community and the ties of love begin to grow faint and then different thinking comes in and all of a sudden it's like there's just this massive drift but he's saying like press in while it's still called today and encourage one another to be ready for the final day so i want to encourage you to encourage someone today and provoke them to love and good works so let me give you a few parameters okay you can call you can text or you can email but i want you to do it to someone at cross point maybe someone in your small group uh, I know we've got at least one small group or a couple of small groups that are meeting. I don't know about all the others, but even if you're not meeting, reach out to somebody in your small group, call, text, or email, and do so in uh, the framework of provoking them to love and, and to good works. Could just be encouraging them saying, hey, I miss you, uh, looking forward to seeing you again. But that act, that act of reaching out and arresting someone else in the name of God's love, in the name of God's comfort, does something internally. It gets us out of an inward posture, out of a victim posture, which we can easily slip into, everyone can, and it gets us thinking offensively about the love of Christ and, and encouraging others. And when we do that, something happens something beautiful happens internally. So let me challenge you to do that. Call, text, or email someone in your small group. Do it today. Or if you're watching this Wednesday, 11.55 p.m., you can wait until you know tomorrow. But at any rate, do that and do it swiftly and provoke others to love and good works. When we're all doing that, we're a happy family and we're happy and healthy. But uh, when that goes on the decline, it's just, it's easy for folks to drift. Uh, it's easy to kind of slip. And then the desire to not connect grows faint. And well, we don't have to go into all of that. So let me bless your cross point, okay? Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Love your cross point. We'll see you Sunday. Goodbye.